started. All right, welcome to the virtual fair. I'm just gonna let a, a few more moments go by for anyone else who will be joining the webinar live. And reminder, this is recorded. So if there's any information you feel like you might've missed, you will be able to gather that from StriveScan's website. And I'll put all of that information in the chat for you. Okay, as you can see on the screen, uh, uh, welcome to our virtual college fair. This is a fantastic opportunity for you to have a brief six minutes uh, introductory to these different universities, uh, um, universities, colleges, institutions that you may explore um, after high school. This is really, really important. The panelists cannot see or hear you uh, as you're an attendee. So if you would like to pose a question to one or all of the institutions, the Q&A button on your screen, mine is at the bottom. They're either at the bottom or the top. The Q&A button is the best way to ask a question. Um, so you can click that and, and pose your question there and the panelists can answer that at any time throughout this 45 minute session. Just again, your microphone and video are off so they cannot hear or see you. Uh, you can sign up for more sessions at the same place you signed up for this one. And a recording again will be available within a week at strivescan.com forward slash forward slash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. And I will put all of that information again in the chat for you. So we are going to kick it off uh, with Sacred Heart University. All right, thank you, Christy. And good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Just gonna pull up my PowerPoint quickly and we can get started. So my name is Trevor O'Brien. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Sacred Heart. And I recruit in the state of New York. And so this session just have a couple of quick topics, academics, extracurriculars, and then we'll touch on the application process at the end. We're gonna start just quickly with some fast facts about Sacred Heart. So we were founded in 1963 by the Diocese of Bridgeport, Connecticut. We are located in Fairfield, Connecticut, and we were the first Catholic college in the United States to be staffed entirely by lay people, which is where we got the name of Pioneers. We have an undergraduate enrollment of about 5,600 students and a total university enrollment of a little over 8,000 when you include graduate students. So I always like to describe Sacred Heart as being a happy medium. It's not too small. We'd be seeing the same people every day, but at the same time, it's not too large where you're feeling overwhelmed or lost at all with this. Quickly just going through the different colleges of study that we have here. This lists all the different colleges and schools that we have. Now, St. Vincent's College offers kind of associate certification programs. That's geared more towards part-time students. The majority of you guys will be placed in one of the first five colleges that are listed. And overall, we have over 80 different majors and concentrations, as well as an undecided option if you don't necessarily know what you want to study. That's totally fine. And we also have over 40 different master's and doctorate programs, a lot of which can be combined into an accelerated option, allowing you to get that degree a year earlier, which is nice. And then just that individualized attention in the classroom is very important to us here at Sacred Heart. Having our class size the way it is really allows you to get that personal connection with your professors in terms of asking questions, which of course is extremely important. Just touching on a couple other academic opportunities, we have our Thomas More Honors Program here for academically inclined students and every student that's accepted to Sacred Heart is automatically considered for this program and there are specific requirements that we look for and those requirements and they can be invited to join. Also studying abroad is something that's really you know, huge for us here at Sacred Heart. We actually have two owned campuses, one in Deagle, Ireland, which is the bottom picture on the slide, as well as one in Luxembourg. But we have over 60 different programs in 30 different countries. What's nice about our programs here at Sacred Heart is that they're open to all majors. So even if you are health professions or nursing, you can study abroad for up to a full semester if you'd like, but there's also two week courses, summer courses that we offer. And then just quickly going through the Center for Career and Professional Development, something that's really important to us here. You might not be doing an internship to your junior or senior year, but we encourage you to use this center your first day freshman year. And that placement rate is also something that's really important to us too. And you know, we have a quick turnaround with graduate school or full-time employment being as high as it is, really getting those students out into the working world or again continuing on with their education. Then just shifting from academics and touching a little bit on extracurricular activities, you know, wherever you decide to go to college, you should definitely get involved. And at Sacred Heart, it's a great opportunity to do so here. We have over 60 different clubs and organizations, and those range from academic clubs, student government, media clubs, fraternity and sorority life. 
we are a Division One school, so we have over 30 different Division One sport programs, but we also have over 30 different club sport and intramural opportunities. And if there's anybody interested in performing arts, for example, you can actually set up an audition with our performing arts department. And if you do well in that audition, you can actually receive an additional grant coming to Sacred Heart. And of course, campus ministry, volunteer programs, multicultural organizations are very important to us here too. And especially volunteer programs, both working in the local community, but also nationally and internationally, we have a lot of great opportunities to get involved with that. Also residential life is something that I wanna to touch on quickly. We actually have four years of housing that is available and there's a two year residency requirement. So that means that you must live in Sacred Heart Housing for your first two years. Starting junior year, if you wanted to move off campus, you're welcome to do so. But if you want to live in housing for all four years, you have that option. And there's also plenty of virtual tours of all of our residential halls that are available online. So I definitely encourage you guys to do that if you're interested. Now, just touching quickly on some of the different things that we've done at Sacred Heart to really reinvest in you guys as students. So I wanna talk quickly about our Center for Healthcare Education building. So this was designed a couple of years ago and it's housing our College of Health Professions and our College of Nursing. And this is designed after Monterey Hospital. So it really gives you that great clinical experience while you're taking your classes. Also our West Campus property houses our College of Business and Education. And again, just kind of new state-of-the-art academic spaces, really giving you guys the opportunity to integrate and work with your professors and your peers closely. Next, our Bobby Valentine Health and Recreation Center. So this was built just this past year, and it's got great workout equipment for students to utilize, multi-purpose sport courts. The bottom floor has a six-lane bowling alley. There's a rock climbing wall. There's also a smoothie bar in there, too. So just outside of the classroom, a great place to hang out. Similarly, JP's Diner, another great staple for us here on campus. It was built a few years ago. Um, this is kind of the all-day breakfast, signature sandwiches, and milkshakes. So definitely a favorite spot for students to kind of hang out and enjoy. And then lastly, I just want to kind of touch upon applying to Sacred Heart, just running through some of the deadlines that we have for this upcoming year, the first of which is early decision, the binding agreement, Sacred Heart's your number one choice. This is where you want to go. You could certainly go early decision. You'd be notified by middle of December. Most students that would fall into the early action one category, the deadline to do so is December 15th. That's not binding. It's also the priority deadline for our nursing program. So if you're interested in applying nursing, you must do so by December 15th. You'd be getting notified by the end of January. And then we also have early action two, which is also non-binding. The deadline for that's February 1st, which you can be notified by the middle of February. And then after that, um, all of your other uh, uh, applications are considered on a rolling basis. So again, if there's any questions that anybody has, feel free to let myself know in that Q&A, but I'll also include my information in the chat for you guys. So you can feel free to reach out, but I'm gonna pass it over to our next presenter. All right, thank you so much. Uh... Next up, we have Castleton University. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Zeitler. I'm just going to share a screen here real quick, hopefully. Do you guys see a screen? Sorry about that. Yes. OK, thank you. I appreciate the clarity. So my name is Joe Zeitler. I'm one of the counselors here at Castleton University. I'm an actual alum of Castleton. Grew up in Saratoga Springs, New York. Was a hockey guy back in the heyday. I review all New York files. We're going to talk a little bit about Castleton right here, kind of fly through it within that six minute realm. Overall size, about 2,000 students. Our location is prime. So we're only five minutes from the New York border. Across the border would be Whitehall, New York, and only 15 minutes away from Rotland, Vermont, which would be the third largest city of all Vermont. And we're only four miles away from Lake Bomazine. And Lake Bomazine is the largest lake within the state of Vermont. So we're literally in the heart of the Green Mountains. So if you love the outdoors, it's prime. We're the 18th oldest university in the United States and Vermont's first higher ed institution. So we pride ourselves on history. We've got over 75 different programs to choose from. It's A-OK -okay if you're not really sure what you wanna major in. So we are a liberal arts institution and technically you don't have to lock and load a major until the end of your second year. We have an ever-growing list of graduate programs and pre-professional tracks. And what I loved about my experience at Castleton was that, excuse me, was that faculty staff size, uh, student teacher ratio, sorry and the average class size of being 17 students. Internships are huge. Research is saturated at the undergraduate level. And then we've got a vast array of different study abroad opportunities. Obviously with COVID, it's definitely messed things up, but hopefully we can expand those horizons in the next year or so. Over 50 clubs, organizations, no matter where you decide to go off to school, uh, get involved. The more involved you are within a college, the better time you're gonna have at college. We've got over 65 performing arts uh, events that happen on campus. All students that enroll in the Castleton get our Killington Beast Pass, which is a free season ski pass. The Pico, you can upgrade that for 250 and that covers all of Killington Resort. What I love about it is it also includes equipment rental and lessons. So if you've never done that, you can definitely hit that up. We're also a residential campus. So the majority of our students do reside on campus and we represent 28 states and 42 different countries. 
The benefit of being a first year student, first and foremost, if you have a car, feel free to bring it. First year students are allowed to have cars. We don't segregate first year students when it comes to residence halls. So each of our residence halls has a 60-40 ratio, 60% upperclassmen and 40% first year students. We're all singles, doubles. You guys get to choose whatever style residence hall you wanna live in and you will get that. What parents appreciate is it's the same price across the board, no matter what style residence hall that you choose. It's monumental to note that although our size is about 2,100 students, we've got over 20 varsity sports programs. So chances are we have a sport of your interest, but if you're not in, interested in being a varsity athlete, we have club sports, intramurals are a blast too, and over 180 sporting events. I wanna talk briefly about the application process. We are a common application institution. So we've encouraged you to apply that way. Obviously we'll need your high school transcript. SAT, ACT scores are gonna be waived and this slide needs to be updated. It's gonna to be till fall 2022. And then an essay is gonna be required, letter of recommendation. And this kind of paints the picture of the typical student that would come in through our doors with averages. 81% receive financial aid, which consists of loans, grants, scholarships. As you can see on this slide, we have scholarships that range from a thousand all the way up to full tuition. So, obviously important variable and ultimately hard work pays off, right? We wanna encourage you to stay connected with us. So we have a We Are Spartans at Castleton.edu account. That's a private account to our students here. So if you have student life questions, we would encourage you to email a current student here to get that uh, candid reply on that front. Stay in touch with us on those socials too. And then lastly, uh, this is gonna be a slide that's gonna highlight our visit options. So we do have out-of-state visitors uh, opportunity right now. They need to meet the COVID guidelines. We have a virtual tour on our website too. I also wanna share with you a quick little video to keep it within that six minute realm. Family. I think there's something really powerful about how long Castleton's been around as a university. We're the 18th oldest college in the, in the country, oldest college in Vermont. One might think that we would take a conservative approach. We've seen a huge improvement in our facilities for athletics. We can't just rest on our laurels. You look around campus, you see labs being you know, renovated and built. We've had a, a, you know, a million plus in science lab renovation. We had a half a million dollar renovation in our theater department. This is, this is an incredible facility. You're, again, in a, in a small town in rural Vermont, and we have one of the nicest theater facilities in the whole state. I think we've done a really good job of sinking our roots into a bunch of different places, getting involved in terms of our resort and hospitality management program. They're living and learning uh, right on the mountain. Getting involved in Jennings. Um, those programs represent an opportunity to expand our nursing program to serve more Vermonters. Our students are those people, are those scientists, are those doctors in the field, and they're changing the world. We can do really well academically. Our students represent us well, they represent themselves well. Students who care about their academics and their achievements and their GPA. So I just wanted to share that with you on that front. Uh, forgive me, let me just close out that slide. So if you do have any questions, I am your counselor. So uh, like I said, I review all New York files and I'll add my contact information in the chat box. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up we have Champlain College. Excellent, thank you so much. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Uh, so I can walk you through a little bit about Champlain College, which is a uh, small private school also located in Vermont. However, we are located in Burlington, Vermont, a little further north. Uh, small school, uh, private location with about a 2,100 students on campus with us per year, which means on average, our class size is about 16 students with a 12 to one faculty ratio. And our goal at Champlain College is getting our students ready for their future careers um, and just how to navigate their life after they graduate. So we have a very holistic approach to how we complete our education at Champlain College, where we really work to tie our major-based classes, our core curriculum classes, and our flagship a career program called the Insight Program together, where students get four full years in their major based classes um, under the upside down curriculum so that they can graduate with a highly marketable resume um, and prepared to enter the workforce uh, with a leg up. They, our graduates are leaders in their field of study uh, and ready to dive right in. Uh, 
uh, at Champlain, this, uh, I really need to update this program because we actually recently added a few new majors at Champlain. So right now we have 30 career focused majors, uh, minors and areas of concentration, again, with students getting four full years in their major based classes. Um, it allows them to add areas of concentration in their third and fourth year to really focus on a specific area of their major that they're most passionate about. All of our majors fall under four different schools of study. We have our Robert P. Stiller School of Business, Communication and Creative Media, Education and Human Studies, and Information Technology and Sciences. We also have a degree design lab program where students can create their own majors with faculty assistance by combining two to three different majors that you see up on the screen now. We're also well known for our game design pro studio, uh, which actually currently has six majors. We just added two new majors to our game studio program for interest, students who are interested in joining the video game industry. Uh, those programs are game production management, uh, game publishing, game sound design, uh, game art, game look design, uh, and game programming. So if anybody's interested in any uh, programs in the game industry, Champlain is a great choice for that. All students are also welcome to come in undeclared. Um, again, with that upside down curriculum, you get tons of time to figure out which is the right path for you. Uh, internships are also very popular with Champlain. We actually ask all of our students to complete at least one internship, but because of our upside down curriculum and students being able to start earlier, uh, usually in their second year of study, students can start internships with Champlain. Students typically complete two or more internships. Um, and these are just some examples of areas that our students have recently completed internships. Some of these might seem familiar to you, um, like Seventh Generation, Ben and Jerry's, Burton, uh, Curie Green Mountain. These are all Burlington uh, local companies that are globally known as well. So our students get tons of great options to complete internships. Uh, students can also complete internships internationally if they choose to study abroad, which is a program Champlain is very passionate about. Um, we have two campuses that are Champlain Curriculum, Housing and Faculty. Those are located in Dublin, Ireland and Montreal, Canada. Uh, we also have third party programs where students are really going all over the world. We've had students in Italy, France, Tokyo, Morocco. Uh, a lot of our students like to go to New Zealand. We also have a program for students who do not want to study abroad for a full semester. In their third year, they can take courses where they study a specific area in the world and then get to travel there for a week with their fellow classmates and faculty. I want to talk a little bit about Burlington, the city that we are located in, which is consistently named one of America's number one college towns. Uh, Champlain students kind of get the best of both worlds. We are a small school, but we're sharing the city of Burlington with several other colleges. So Burlington typically has over 14,000 college students in the city um, every year. And our campus is within walking distance of the downtown area um, where students are taking get to enjoy restaurants, shops, uh, music galleries, art venues and tons of outdoor event space. We're also located right on Lake Champlain, so our students are out on that water all the time. We have a community sailing center where students get to rent sailboats, paddleboards, kayaks. Um, it's basically an extension of our campus. Our students are very active and love to complete outdoor activities. Um, Church Street is another place you're going to find a lot of our students hanging out, uh, meeting up with the other college students in the area and completing a lot of those internships. A lot of local businesses have their um, main headquarters down near the Church Street area. Uh, housing on campus, our first year students get to choose from over 20 Victoria era mansions, which are all unique buildings, um, which were converted into first year residence halls. So every residence hall is different and every room inside is different as well. So it really offers a great transition into college uh, living and a great way to get to know your fellow first year students. These are mixed gender per floor. Um, and then we also have uh, gender fluid housing as well. Uh, Champlain degree really pays off uh, 80 of 88% of our 2019 students um, were employed or continuing their education within six months of graduating. And of those 88% that were employed, every single student was working in a job related to their career goal with the upside down curriculum, internships, and our career collaborative team gives them tons of options to help them reach those goals. Um, we also have a count on a guarantee, which is our financial aid. Students can submit a FAFSA for need-based aid, but all students are considered for merit-based aid. We also have an upcoming visit opportunity. Uh, you can go to our website, champlain.edu slash visit to attend our Explore Champlain open house on April 6th. A great way to learn more about Champlain in an interactive way. And very quickly about how to apply to Champlain. We have early decision, uh, applications due in November 15th, binding agreement, uh, regular decision for January 15th. We are on the Common app. We also have a Champlain specific app with no application fee and we are test score optional. Excellent. And that is a little bit about Champlain College. I will go ahead and put my contact information into the chat. So if you have any questions, you know how to reach out. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, definitely put that in the chat. 
Uh, next up, we have IE University. Hi, everyone. Just a minute. I'm going to share my screen. So welcome to IE University. My name is Elsa and I'm the local representative of IE University in the Northeast. So I'll be your point of contact uh, through the work process at IE. So what, what is IE University? We're an international university based in Spain with two locations, one in Madrid and Segovia. Uh, we have several accreditations, which means that students can study and work in more than 130 plus countries upon graduation. Among our bachelor program, we have programs varying, ranging from architecture to business to law to computer science and artificial intelligence and even applied mathematics. We also offer dual degrees, uh, which is a combination of two degrees, uh, for example, one in international relations and economics, or one in, in uh, law and international relations, etc. All of our programs are four years for a single program, five years for a dual degree. They're all entirely taught in English, and you usually have the options to pick whether you want to study in Segovia or in Madrid. So our students every year, we welcome students from more than 50 plus different education system. 75% of our students are international students and there are more than 45 languages spoken on campus. In total, we have 130 plus different nationalities in the undergraduate student body. And we have a total number of 4,100 students on average in our undergraduate student body. As I mentioned, we have two campuses, but one single IE uh, experience. So uh, this is the campus in Segovia. It's actually a monument preserved by UNESCO. It's more than 800 years old, so older than the United States. And it's an old coven that we converted into our campus. So as you can see, although it's a very historic place, the facilities are extremely modern. The, here is a couple of pictures from of Segovia, the city. Fun fact, the castle of Segovia is one of the castles that actually inspired the logo of Disney. And this is our campus in Madrid. Uh, so we have a very new skyline and uh, the IE tower is gonna be, is ready actually uh, for the fall and students will have the opportunity to be the very first intake studying there. Uh, it's a 30 floor skyscraper in the middle of the uh, financial business district in Madrid. It was made with renewable, mat uh, sustainable material and operates with renewable energy. And it's the largest green uh, campus in Europe. So at IE, we value flexibility and we want you to grow with us. So, uh, so you have the opportunity to pick your own elective, advanced seminar. You have the opportunity to go for a couple of international exchanges yeah, and uh, go for an internship and also join one of our IEU labs. So what are our IEU labs? We have more than 10 different labs and first and second year students can join them uh, and gain work experience on campus with scholars, their classmates, and a team from an actual company. For example, the communication lab work with Twitter last uh, last year, and they had to work on the camp, the, the Spanish governmental campaign, and they gain a lot of insights on content, filtering, targeting, demographic, geographic, etc. It was very interesting for them. In terms of exchange program, we have more than 160 plus uh, partner university across the world. Cornell in the US, uh, um, McGill in Canada, and universities all around Asia, from China to Japan to Australia, the Middle East, etc. We also have a joint summer program with Brown University, which means that you can, as an IE student, go and study uh, for a, for a couple of weeks at Brown, transfer your credits and get back to IE. Uh, as a UPR, uh, UPR, uh, university, we have 100 plus activities on campus with our various clubs. The, those are clubs based on interest, uh, on career, uh, career uh, paths, 
uh, on uh, your nationalities, etc. We also have our own podcast and newsletters. In terms of ranking, we're the first university in Spain, seven in Europe, and 23rd worldwide. 95% of IE university students find a job upon graduation, and 8% actually end up being entrepreneurs. 25% uh, of our students end up uh, pursuing a graduate program, and 34% uh, of our job seekers work outside of their country of origin. So how to apply? Uh, you will need to submit your online application via Common App or our own website, then uh, with a couple of documents. Uh, then you need to take a test score, whether we're talking about the ACT, the ACT, or taking our own admission test. And finally, you will be sent an online assessment. And if we review your application and we like it, you'll be invite, uh, invited for a personal interview and hear back from, uh, from us soon. So as you can see, uh, our admission process is 100% online. Uh, we usually ask for a letter of recommendation, an essay, uh, a test score, the KIRA assessment, an interview, a portfolio, depending on the program. And uh, that's it. Thank you. And I'm going to drop my email address in case you have any questions regarding Spain or IE. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Vermont Technical, please. Hi, everybody. I'm just making sure you can hear me. Awesome. All right. Awesome. So my name is Savannah Simons. I'm an assistant director of admissions at Vermont Technical College in, um, well, we've got actually a couple of locations. So Randolph Center campus is our original campus. Um, it's the one that's behind me right now. And I promise it looks like this all the time, right? No. Um, uh, so this is beautiful Randolph Center in the fall. Um, it's a little bit more of a rural campus. It sits on about 500 plus acres. Uh, there's about 800 students at this campus. We have a dining hall and a sports grill and a um, sports complex as well. See, uh, we also, this campus also has a ski hill uh, with its own rope tow and a lab where you can man manufacture your own skis. Um, we, uh, clubs, intramurals, and varsity athletics are also held on this campus. The Williston campus is a bit more north. It's up near Burlington, Vermont, so close to Champlain, actually. Um, this is a bit more urban setting. Uh, it's right, on, uh, right next to Burlington. Um, it's a bit more of a tight-knit campus with about uh, 500 students on it, and most of them are commuters, but we do have residential halls, um, a residential hall on the Wilson campus as well. Um, so we are a small college. We Our total enrollment is only about 1,600. Um, I mentioned those two main campuses. There's all those other green dots are um, campuses that we have as well, specifically dedicated to our nursing program. Um, so the total enrollment is about 1,600. Our average class size is about 15. Student to teacher ratio is about 15 to 1. So you, of course, in your English classes, you may be with 20 to 30 other people, but then, you know, if you go into specifically like software or a bit more of a specialized degree, you may be with, um, you know, five to even 10 people um, in your class. Um, so we do have uh, really great outcomes. 100% of our programs are career focused and hands on. You will start with the hands on training in your um, career field in the first semester. So dental hygiene students practice on their um, classmates in the first semester, pilots are up in the air by like, I think the second or third week. Um, we have an overall 99% placement rating. Um, so folks that have graduated have gone on to, 99% um, have gone on to get jobs in, in their field or higher education. You can see a list of our employers down at the bottom there as well. You'll notice some that are local to Vermont then some that are national and some that are international. Um, we have organized into four schools. The first is the School of Engineering and Computing. You'll notice we have two-year degrees and four-year degrees, as well as a master's degree in that, um, the computer software engineering. So anything with an AE or AAS is a two-year degree, and of course, BS is a bachelor's. And the School of Nursing and Health Professions. This is um, where most of our, um, I would say the majority of our students are just because nursing is such a big program for us. Um, respiratory therapy is also something that's up and coming um, due to COVID. So we've seen um, a really big uptick in that as well. Um, then of course, um, professional studies and management. This is where our business degrees are professional pilot technology, construction management, diesel, auto tech, entrepreneurship, that sort of thing. And you can't talk about Vermont without talking about agriculture. So we do have agribusiness, diversified agriculture, landscape contracting, if you're looking to be like a greenhouse manager, um, of course, veterinary technology. Um, you can actually go into the pet tech area or the farm and pet the animals. So I like to do that on a, on a bad day, you know? 
Uh, we do have varsity athletics as well. We are affiliated with the Yankee Small College Conference and the United States Collegiate Athletic Association. We have soccer, basketball, cross country, track and field, and esports is coming soon as well. Oh, so for application information, we are on the Common app. Um, we do also have, of course, an in-person app if you want to try that out as well. It's on our website. You can visit vtc.edu slash apply to learn what we need from different applicants. It will depend on what major you're, you are applying for. Um, and tuition can also depend on which major you are applying for and which campus you'll be at. Um, so uh, we do rolling admission for most of our programs. We did have a December 1st deadline for nursing, dental hygiene, radiologic science, and veterinary technology. Um, those classes have been filled for now, but we um, are still accepting waitlist applications. So I do encourage you to submit something as soon as possible. Uh, for most majors, we have gone test optional. So um, pretty much all you will need to apply is of course the application itself and then the um, then your high school transcripts um, and that in the uh, because the essay is optional as well this year. Um, so you can uh, we are accepting visitors um, from out of state right now. You can visit vtc.edu slash events to find out um, when you can um, to schedule a visit. Um, there is also some virtual tours up there for our Williston campus and the Randolph Center campus. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. And then, yeah, Facebook as well. Um, and then also we do have some really wonderful student projects. So if you're thinking about going for an engineering type degree, um, visit that vtc.edu slash the lab. Um, there are some wonderful projects down there that our, our students have built. So I know one, one group built a, um, an automatic foosball table that's powered by AI. So this this foosball table will kick your butt, like unless you're like amazing at foosball. So there, that was pretty cool to watch being built. Um, my information is here at the bottom, as well as the information for our regular or our general admissions team. Uh, feel free to drop me a line, and I'll also copy and paste this into the chat. Um, yeah, feel free to reach out with any questions. And thank you for thank you for attending. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Western Colorado. Perfect, thanks so much. Give me one second to get set up. Okay. Hello, buenas tardes, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alejandro Alejandre. Yes, that's a letter difference. No, I do not have two first names or last names. I do go by Alex though. I'm a regional director of recruitment for Western Colorado University, uh, a four year public liberal institution that's located at the heart of the Rocky Mountain in Gunnison, Colorado. We serve over 3,000 students, so 26 undergraduate students, over 400 graduate students. But we implemented a lot of, we started a lot of, pro, we brought a lot of programs on campus, which is definitely going to drive enrollment up. But just to give you a little bit of perspective on where we're located, we're located in the southwest corner of Colorado, about four hours southwest of Denver. Now we're in a very neat location. There's in a way in your Colorado adventure place. We have Crestview, which is, has a famous ski resort where, which is a popular location. It's popular attraction for a lot of the students. You can also mountain bike, hike, and the colors. I can't say they're, they're absolutely blissful in the fall. We also have Harmons. Uh, we also have Harmons, which is about five miles south of town. It is the largest outdoor recreational area in Colorado. It's over 8,000 acres and students, that's where your outdoor activities will take place. So anything from mountain biking, hiking, rock climbing, camping, there's a lot of things to do up there. And then we also have Blue Mesa, which is about 10 miles west of town. It is the largest body of water in Colorado, it's over 20 miles long, and that's where your water activities will, will, will most likely take place. So paddle boarding, fishing, nice fishing, or you can even have a nice garden outside and that's barbecue on a hot Saturday evening. Gotta let you hit the spot. Uh, like I said, a lot of things to do in a way, all your Colorado adventure. Um, like I said, we are a four-year public labor arts institution. Uh, we offer over 100 areas of studies. Average class size is 17, 84% of the classes are taught by a full-time professor and 71% of those professors have 21 degrees. So you really get to, you know, connect with those professors at a deeper level. And also, like I said, they are fully dedicated to your education. Yes, they're still doing research on the side, but they're fully um, dedicated, like I said, to your success. So you can meet with them on a weekly, daily basis. And like I said, they host office hours. So you can, so you can talk to them at any time. Some of the popular majors that we offer will be business, biology, recreational education, environmental sustainability. Actually, anything with outdoors, I would say it's our bread and butter. I mean, we're surrounded by 1.7 million acres of public land. 
So like I said, anything with outdoors, like wildlife, biology, environmental, assistability, or ROE, I would say those are some of the top major programs that we offer. We actually do offer as well, um, computer science and engineering. We actually just got a very generous donation of $80 million to build a computer science and mechanical engineering school. Uh, there's students taking classes at, there at the moment, um, but students are taking Sarah, using Sarah the art equipment um, and, and our state of the art equipment. Now we are de dedicated to your success. Uh, we offer various programs, services to help you. And uh, for example, each student is going to be assigned an academic advisor in their field. Those advisors will guide them through the first year to last year at Western, and they'll meet with them on a daily basis, weekly basis. Uh, we also have an, a math and writing center, free resources, and then we also have an epic mentorship program where. EPIC stands for Experience, Peers, Initiation, Connections, a new program that we have on campus where every incoming student is going to be paired with an upperclassman as a student. An upperclassman student at Western, that student will help them, guide them, and support them through the first year at Western. Now, there's always something going on, not just off campus, but also on campus. We have over 50 clubs and organizations. Those who student like clubs of students once they happen, and all they did to make it happen was just propose the idea to student government. So student government allocates over $250,000 and all the clubs at Western, so like I said, there's always something going on. Now, tuition, cost of attendance. Tuition's over $18,000, so that's definitely below the national average of 22. 80% of students receive some type of aid and 100% of them are considered for merit aid. Now, our merit scholarships are pre acceptance and they go off your cumulative GPA. We're going test optional, so we're just looking at GP, uh, your GPA, weighted GPA to be more specific, but those range from eight to $10,000 a year. Uh, so renewable scholarship, like I mentioned, that you receive for four years, how long as you maintain the GPA at 2.75. To visit the rest of our scholarships, definitely visit western.edu forward slash scholarships. Now, how do you become a Mountaineer? Uh, you can apply to the common application or you can apply to the Western application. Um, either way, we'll need your transcripts. Now, we're like I mentioned, we are going test optional and we hope to continue that after 2021 but there is an application fee of $30 if you do decide to apply to the Western application. Definitely reach out to me or the missions office at Western. We'll give you that promo code to waive that fee. If you're below our 50 percentile, definitely, re definitely submit any material that will help support your application, whether that's a letter of recommendations, personal statements, uh, an essay. Um, you have an option to answer the promise why Western. Definitely submit that. We'll look at everything you submit for us uh, before we place the decision. Now, come and visit us. I would say once you know your options, top three, top five schools, depending on how, on how many you apply for, make sure you visit those schools before you make a decision. It is crucial. You are looking for an next home and you got to be happy with it. So we are hosting in-person visits. We're probably one of a few schools in Colorado. They run Monday through Friday and Saturday upon request. Uh, those visits include an information session, a campus tour, and then if you want to meet with a professor, a coach, or someone on your choice, we can definitely arrange those as well. Uh, you can well, you can go visit western.edu uh, forward slash visit to uh, schedule a campus visit. And if, if you can come down and visit campus, definitely keep an eye out for our virtual events. Uh, we have a lot of events coming up this uh, spring. Uh, definitely visit western.edu forward slash recruitment events to see all those events that we have coming up. If you would like to learn more about Western or you have any questions, definitely reach out to me or the missions office. Uh, their information is on this slide. So, uh, but thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. You're muted, Christy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so unmute yourself, uh, turn your camera on. I'm going to ask you this question and if you could go into the same order that you presented, the question is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process and uh, kicking it off with Sacred Heart? Yeah, so it's a you know pretty simple answer, but I think it's really important. And it is honestly to ask questions. At the end of all of our presentations, we said we gave our contact information and said, please feel free to reach out to us, you know, and that's the best way to, to kind of get an idea for a school is you know coming and visiting it, but you don't know if you can visit unless you ask the question, you know, just reaching out to the school itself, reaching out to the counselor, even if it's friends and family that you know that have attended to the school, ask them questions about what they thought about their experiences. That's a that's a great way to kind of understand the school, at least initially. And then if that draws your interest in, you can continue to follow up and go and learn more about the campus. And then if there's more questions that come up down the road, then you can kind of go forth from there. But that's definitely a great start, and, you know, a great way to kind of get a sense early on. 
So the piece of advice I would give is to take a deep breath. This entire process can be very overwhelming for parents, for students, for parents in particular, whether it's your first child going off to college or your last, and there's a huge gap in there. Things have drastically changed over the years. Um, kind of take it in stride. And as Trevor alluded to, communication is key. So just make sure to take it in stride, take a deep breath. Uh, yeah, what I would say, uh, just like Joe said, it is certainly an overwhelming process. There are so many colleges out there to uh, explore and to look at and choose from. So my advice would be to have a wish list. Um, know what you want in a college and what you don't want in a college. That will really help you narrow down which uh, colleges you want to then connect with and ask those questions and really help streamline the process. So thinking about location, size, program, of course, but looking at other things too. What kind of activities are there? Um, you know, what can you get involved in? What type of resources do colleges have for their alumni um, to help out after you graduate? So wish list of what you want and what you don't want in a college. Yeah, so uh, I think that my biggest advice would be to consider your college years as a passport, a passport that can lead you to your dreams and your future career aspiration. So it's you're very young. It's normal to not have a very clear vision of where you want to be, but I'm sure that there's a vision of where you don't want to be or the, the key uh, the key takeaways of uh, the kind of careers that you want in an international organization, uh, in this or that sectors, etc. So research and make sure that uh, whoever you're picking is going to be a great passport that's going to help you open all the doors uh, in the job market in the future. I would love to piggyback on what Elsa just said. Um, there are many ways to get to where you want as well. Uh, with nursing, of course, you know, that might be more of like a traditional path, but I mean, I, I like mentioning the counselors in this panel right now probably all come from different academic backgrounds. Um, so there's many ways to get to where you wanna go um, and explore your options. And then for me, it's just, I guess, just trust the process. I mean, it is a accessible process, but make sure just like Joe said, take a deep breath and, and you know, apply to the schools you're interested in, you know, be open-minded and, you know, definitely visit those schools before you make a decision. It is crucial. I mean, you are looking for your next home and you gotta be happy with it. So make sure everything you're interested in, everything you're passionate about, that school has it. Um, like I said, you're gonna be there for the next four years or more. So definitely, uh, you know, visit those schools and also just apply for scholarships. I think uh, that's the biggest thing. It's not just what, what type of school you're looking for, but also how you're going to pay for that school. So that's all great advice. Um, we actually have a little bit more time. If you could quickly uh, go through in the same order and share what your favorite event or tradition is on your campus. This one's always fun and it's a good way to kind of showcase what's special about your institution. Sacred Heart. Yeah, sure. So something that we do here, um, it was organized originally by our student government office, is called the Shoe Hunger Project. So essentially that allows our entire campus community, both students, but also faculty and staff members to kind of engage with each other and essentially make care packages for, you know, those who are less fortunate. And, you know, the last time that we were able to do it within a six hour span, we were able to make over 50,000 care packages, which was awesome. Again, seeing the, the students kind of interact from all the different aspects and, and parts of campus, but also with faculty and staff putting a hand in there too. So we're definitely excited to get back to that, of course, once we're able to do so and kind of continue on with that, that tradition and that event. A tradition for Castleton is each incoming class plants a tree. So you can see that on the sidewalks as you navigate campus on that front. And then obviously we're a really old school. So we're celebrating 230 years. Uh, tradition for all of our incoming classes is there's a candle lighting ceremony where all of our incoming class walk through alumni gates. And the night before graduation, senior year, they also walk through alumni gates again. Uh, one of my favorite traditions at Champlain College is actually the spring meltdown event uh, that the school puts on for our students right before finals week. Uh, our whole courtyard here is turned into a carnival type event for students to come together, play games, do crafts, uh, do fun competitions. We have those big blow up uh, obstacle courses um, and it's different themes every year. So it's a ton of fun to just get outside, uh, out of the library, out of your, your residence hall, uh, get away from your books for a minute and just take a deep breath and have some fun before you dive into your finals week. Uh, 
uh, we celebrate IE Day every 16th of March. And basically everyone needs to wear blue and uh, present, you know, we have more than 250 clubs on campus. So every single club have a representative and you have like some carnival, uh, we have like belly dancing, Las Vias del Muertos, like really every kind of festivals that happens around the world, the representant club, etc., will have their own, uh, you know, their, their own little uh, performance. And it's a very nice way to connect with everyone and just to uh, see things as they are outside of campus and have a bit of every, like, you know, of the world, a piece of the world on campus. So, yeah. My favorite is our homecoming festival. Um, and we've just kind of like started meshing homecoming, parents weekend and alumni day, um, alumni day all together. So it's um, pretty much like everyone's on campus. And it's a really good way to connect um, new students to alumni, um, parents to alumni. So um, that's really great too. Um, there's uh, festivals and we are the green knights. So we try to serve a, um, like a knight's feast at the, uh, in the cafeteria or it's in the dining hall. So it's, um, we see people walking around like giant turkey legs and, and um, cups of mead or stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Gosh, mine is someone's is some, exactly like Savannah. So it's a combination of a tradition that we have on campus and also my favorite event and that's homecoming. I mean, nothing beats homecoming. I mean, we have a tradition that where we lie our W on fire. It's a, it's by on our mountain where you can see it from anywhere on campus. And, you know, it's done by a mom rescue team and we light the entire W on fire during homecoming. And we have alums uh, come from everywhere. You know, there's a lot of festivities that are going on. We got the big football game on, on Saturday and it's just a really awesome event. Like I said, uh, that W, you can see that thing from anywhere. And uh, like I said, it's done by my rescue team, but that's a my favorite event and a neat tradition that we have on our campus. So that's awesome. Uh, all of those sound really fun <laughs> and kind of exciting. So uh, thank you for sharing your expertise with us, uh, panelists, and thank you those who were able to attend or are watching this now. Uh, we couldn't do this uh, without you, and especially how complicated things are uh, making it work so that uh, students and parents can experience the universities or institutions before they make decisions. Uh, so thank you again, a best of luck to the students and parents. And uh, you know, my last piece is just reach out to these folks here, these panelists, because they're the experts and they're there to help you. So thank you again and enjoy your day. <laughs>